Hello ladies and gents, it's EasyScape, and welcome to the top 10 largest bounties in speedrunning. But before we get into it, I want to tell you all about a $1000 speedrunning competition hosted by Chop Chop Games for their newly released team game, MineRalph. MineRalph is an indie 2D platformer which describes itself as a crossover between Sonic the Hedgehog and Super Meat Boy and has a control scheme of Angry Birds. You move MineRalph around by clicking behind him with different angles, and you'll be surprised by how much control you have, how well the game carries momentum, and just how difficult this game is. All rules for the competition will be listed in the description, and they are also this video's sponsor, so any purchases made with the affiliate link in the description will not only be at a discounted price, but will be going to support this channel, and you should help afford videos like donating to casual streamers. Also, top 10s on this channel are done by Beescape now, so I'll let them take it away. Hello everybody, it's Beescape, and welcome to the top 10 largest bounties in speedrunning. Over the last few years, bounties have grown in popularity in the speedrunning community. People are willing to spend money just to see games be pushed to their limit. Bounties generally include breaking a world record in a specific game, or discovering a glitch and or skip that might save time in a speedrun. The price tag on these bounties can range anywhere from a couple hundred to thousands of dollars. In today's video, we're going to explore these bounties and what it takes to beat them. At the time of this video's recording, these are all active bounties, not completed ones. I hope you enjoy. At number 10 we have Borderlands 2. There are four playable characters in this game, Zero, Maya, Axton, and Salvador. In the DLC for this game, you can unlock two additional characters, Gage and Craig. Each character has its own pros and cons, but when ranking them in how optimal they are for speedrunning, Gage takes the lead. Therefore, the main category for this game is any percent with DLC playing as Gage. The best time for this game currently sits just below 2 hours at 1 hour, 59 minutes, and 20 seconds. Over halfway into the game, you encounter something known as the Control Core Angel. It's essentially a 5 to 6 minute auto scroller and can only be sped up by killing enemies as they spawn or by skipping dialogue with other dialogue. Over half the time in this area is standing around waiting for characters to move or injectors to spawn. So if there was a way to spawn the injectors faster, a large portion of this encounter would be cut out due to waiting. The Borderlands 2 community has theorized ways to skip this encounter for years, but to no avail. One of their main theories involves a cutscene that plays after Control Core Angel that brings your character back to Sanctuary, the main hub. The cutscene actually takes place inside the CCA map, on a platform within it, high above in the air. The theory is to get to that platform in some way to trigger the cutscene early, which would skip the entire encounter. A geared Salvador can barely make it, but the cutscene won't trigger. There could still be another way to make it to this platform. They also thought they could try to find the injectors out of bounds, but with some cheat engine checking, it turns out they don't spawn until the moment they appear on the map. The last theory is if something can be done with dialogue skipping, which as mentioned before, does speed up the area slightly, but there hasn't been any dialogue found that could do something beyond what's already expected to happen. As a bonus theory, someone found a way to spawn the hitboxes of the electric pillars early, which was somewhat odd and could potentially lead to something eventually. A bounty was placed on Borderlands 2 for up to $150 for figuring out a way to skip the injectors in CCA. There's three injectors, so $50 apiece. In the description, you will find the Reddit thread for this bounty, which will also include save files already at the Angel fight. To claim this bounty, there must be full video evidence and a very detailed list of exactly what was being done, including what dialogue was occurring. Basically, it needs to be reproduced without much hassle. There's also some tips in the Reddit thread for people who don't speedrun or maybe have never played the game. Skip the injectors, earn some cash. At number 9, we have Thousand Arms. This game mixes elements of Japanese role-playing and dating simulator video games. The antagonists known as the Dark Acolytes are on a mission to find the five legendary Sacred Flames. The game's main protagonist, Mize, has been chosen to find the flames before the Dark Acolytes do. However, to increase the power of his weapons, Mize must have the help of a woman and increases his intimacy level with her by going out on dates. Along his journey, he meets a colorful cast of characters, including girls to date and allies to join his party. Yes, you heard all of that correctly. The speedrun for this game is on the longer side and is about 11 and a half hours long. Professor Palmer is the only runner, router, and tester of the game, and he would like some help to optimize the game further. He's offering a $200 bounty to anyone who discovers a glitch, bug, or sequence break that can make the speedrun faster. And this is not a one-time $200 bounty either, it's $200 for each finding in the game. He's compiled a list of things that would make the game faster. They range anywhere from leveling quickly, obtaining items early, or damage and skill manipulation. There's other possibilities for skips or glitches, and the Reddit thread linked for this game will be in the description. Both emulator and hardware are allowed to be used in the discoveries, as long as the setup is consistent in RTA, or in other words, a live speedrun. He stated this is a bounty that will stay open and can be claimed by multiple people if multiple glitches and setups are found for different things. 
At number 8 we have Quest for Glory Shadows of Darkness. It's an adventure slash role-playing video game hybrid with the point-and-click interface for most computer games in the early 90s. Despite the game's reputation for having bugs, and the fact that the player begins the game two rooms away from the final battle, it ironically remains the only game in its series without a major sequence breaking glitch for speedrunners to use. With this being said, there are a few possibilities for skips. First let's look at what the normal any% percent speedrun is. You start the game, on day 3 Dr. Cranium's plot finishes, on day 5 the Gypsy plot starts and finishes, on day 6 the Vampire Girl is saved, and on day 7 and 8 the game is completed. Key items absolutely necessary to complete the game include 5 rituals and 1 staff of Arana. The first possible skip would involve warping into the final room, however it's not that simple. Because if it were possible to get into the final room, the staff of Arana would be needed but it's only received right before the end game begins. Because of this, there would need to be a way to glitch the item into your inventory to then proceed with a room warp. This would cut the entire game from roughly 26 minutes to about 3 or 4 minutes. Obtaining the staff is non-negotiable in the final room as far as the community can tell, because the last thing you do to complete the game is use the staff on the final item. The second possibility of triggering the endgame early is by saving the little vampire girl Tanya, which gives your character access to the staff and also triggers the events of the endgame. However, this is normally done on night 6. And to trigger the dialogue options that allow her to be saved, you need a doll in your inventory as well as knowledge of the destiny spell learnt from the gypsy camp. If there was a glitch that could be used to trick the game into thinking you know the destiny spell early, about 10 minutes could be shaved off the run. The final theorized skip, and the one that's most likely to exist, is to glitch into the gypsy camp early. However, it cannot be accessed until day 5 at the earliest. In addition, there is an invisible wall that blocks your character's pathing. But beyond that invisible wall, a door to the inside of a wagon exists. This was confirmed with debug scripts, and if you activate them, you can warp your character into the loading area which allows you to trigger later dialogue as if you already had completed that section. This would also trigger the ending on night 4 or 5, but compared to saving the vampire girl early, would add the gypsy camp events. The only problem is getting past that invisible wall. If this was possible, about 5 minutes would be saved in the any% percent run, and possibly more in 100%. There are other possibilities of potential skips for this game, and there will be a paste bin linked in the description. There is a $250 bounty if some sort of sequence break to the endgame is found, and Mr. PR Miller from the Quest for Glory community is very likely to give a bonus. He also stated that if multiple people find multiple ways of skipping the early game, he will pay out multiple times. He runs all the games in the Quest for Glory series, and would love to see Shadows of Darkness pushed further. At number 7 we have Fallout 4. The main category for this game is any percent full game, and the world record is currently held by Tomato Anus with a time of 39 minutes and 45 seconds. Tomato Anus posted a video back in July of 2018 announcing bounties for Fallout 4. The first bounty is referred to as the Terminal No Clip Glitch. It's caused by exiting a terminal a certain way, and the result is being able to fly around, clipping through any boundaries. There is a video of this glitch being performed, however no one in the Fallout community knows how to replicate it. The guy behind the video, Mercenary Snake, stated that he exited a terminal and then he was able to fly around. He said he used no console commands and he couldn't move upward or downward. You could say that this glitch was found accidentally. There's $50 up for grabs for someone to figure out how to recreate this. There was also another member in the community who somewhat recreated this glitch, but instead of interacting with a terminal, they stood up from a bench inside of the institute. However, there was no video footage of this being performed, so there was no way to analyze exactly what happened. So there's another $50 up for grabs for figuring out a way to execute the no-clip glitch using a bench or chair rather than a terminal. If these bounties aren't enough, well get ready, there's three more. Tomato Anus is offering an additional $50 for someone to figure out a way to negate fall damage from any heights without power armor or free fall legs. The route for this game used to have a glitch early on that would sometimes cause you to take massive fall damage and die, and it was mostly unpreventable. At the time, a no damage fall glitch would have been huge for this game as a speedrun, and would have made everything a lot smoother. Within the last few months there was a reroute that removed this glitch from the run. A no damage fall glitch would still be useful today, since it would cause another reroute to the game, since the glitch would save time. On top of this bounty, Gingenia from the Fallout community is offering 50 more dollars if the glitch is A found, and B 100% useful to the speedrun. On Tomato Anus' side, the glitch only has to be found, regardless if it's useful or not. That's $200 in bounties thus far, and the last bounty is set at $250. This is for someone to find a way to skip entering the memory sequence in the game in a fashion that is both applicable to the any% percent run, as well as faster than going through it normally. The sequence in the memory den basically serves as a 5-6 to six minute autoscroller due to long dialogue. When you enter the memory den, you cannot do anything except walk and jump. 
The sequence ends when you interact with the TV, which can only be interacted with by finishing the walking segment and waiting for the long dialogue to finish. There's been a lot of theory crafting on this potential skip, and the community compares it to Barrier Skip from The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker. If this sequence skip were to be found, it would save 5-6 to six minutes because of the long dialogue, but possibly upwards of 20 minutes depending on the method. Tomato Anus has created a 34 minute video detailing the progress that has been made thus far to try and execute the sequence skip, and the link will be in the description if you're interested. In total, there are 5 bounties up for grabs in Fallout 4, equaling up to $450. At number 6 we have Fabled The Lost Chapters. Released in 2005, this game is an extended version of the original Fable released on Xbox in 2004, featuring more quests as well as minor changes. The speedrunning leaderboard for this game is solid for the most part, but there are two theoretical skips that can make the game faster. First, we'll talk about Graveyard Skip. There's a section of the game where you have to get four pieces of gear around a graveyard to be allowed into the demon door to progress. The graveyard itself is pretty annoying to navigate, with undead enemies constantly spawning in front of you and blocking your movement. The primary issue with graveyard is a huge RNG section where you have to fish up one of the pieces of gear. Fishing in Fable is essentially an evil version of the game Red Light Green Light. The fish pulls on the line, and once it stops pulling, you reel it in. You can lose upwards of 25 seconds on average for each try because of the RNG that revolves around the fish pulling on the line too long. Fishing is a notorious run killer, since it takes place in the second half of the run, and even if you catch the fish on your first try, it can still take anywhere from 5 seconds to 1 minute. If that's not enough, there's more luck involved at the end of the map. Once you successfully move through the undead spawns, you must kill 8 undead as they slowly walk into a circle. The problem is that they move very slowly into the circle itself, and are invincible until then. In most cases, you're stuck waiting for them. With all this being said, there have been theories on how to skip everything. You can use a spell called Summon, and a trick called Summon Clip to go through the demon door early, which is possible, and this would skip the entire fishing section. However, the only slight problem is the final area with undead spawns. The issue is that the quest doesn't properly complete if done this way, and stays in your log. If you try and enter the next map, the game won't allow you to do so. A lot of attempts have been made to execute Graveyard Skip, but nothing has been definitive. For Graveyard, there is a $250 bounty for someone to find a way to skip it completely. Like I mentioned earlier, there are two theoretical skips for this game, and the next one is Prison Skip. Prison is a lot more straightforward. You go into the prison, immediately after the graveyard, to rescue your mother. You go through a few maps, pick her up, then try to go back the way you came only to find out that it was a trap, and you're sent into the prison. From there you have to wait for about 3 minutes of dialogue, then do a race around the map, then a stealth minigame. You then have to complete the minigame one more time, and only then you are able to escape using a key you earn as a reward. From there you can pick up your belongings and your mother, backtrack the way you originally came, and fight a boss at the end. The whole process is about 12 minutes long, and has a lot of waiting around, so it would be ideal if the entire prison could be skipped. The closest the Fable community came to completing this was to use Summon Clip to bypass the cutscene trigger for being caught in the trap and going to prison, but the same instance occurs at the end, similar to Graveyard. You're technically on a different quest, so therefore you cannot leave the area. There's a $250 bounty for someone to find a way to execute Prison Skip, and one of the runners for Fable is also throwing in another $50 for each bounty, bringing the total bounty pool to $600. At number 5 we have 1080 Snowboarding. As the name suggests, it's a snowboarding racing video game where the player controls one of eight snowboarders from a first or third person perspective. On July 10th, 2019, a $500 bounty was posted to Reddit challenging anyone to break the Time Attack individual level world record on the course Dragon Cave. Three days later, Bert86 broke his own record by 16 centiseconds, a new personal best. Bert is the renowned champion of 1080 snowboarding, holding five of the six Time Attack individual level world records. A few days after Bert's achievement, a new bounty was made. It's simply to break any of the current world records on the leaderboard, and hold them until the end of the year. The tracks in the game range from 1 to 1.5 one minutes long. The only valid character slash board combination for a world record run is the gold snowboarder with the penguin board because they have the best speed and balance combination. Both NTSC and PAL versions of the game are valid to compete in even though NTSC runs faster. The timer in the game works the same, but it is fair to say that the PAL version has an advantage because it runs slower, giving the player more time to react to certain situations. However, the difference only becomes significant when trying to get very optimized runs. I'm going to briefly go over the tracks in this game, and in the description of this video you can find a pace bin with information that Bert shared with me for each track. The first level, Crystal Lake, is easily the most optimized in the game. The world record for this level stood from 2001 until 2018 until Bert beat it by 3 centiseconds. 
It was eventually lowered by 6 additional centiseconds, and the community envisions that a time of 102.30 is possible. It would be an insane run if no new strategy optimizations were found. The second level, Crystal Peak, is one of the simpler stages. The current world record is a 126.29, and it's possible that a sub 126.20 is achievable with known strategies. The third level, Golden Forest, is much more difficult than the first two stages. The world record stands at a 117.88, and Bert is the only player to break into the 117s. Golden Forest is the second most difficult of the courses to run, and arguably the least well optimized alongside the fourth level, Mountain Village. It's reasonable to think that a time in the 11760s is possible for Golden Forest. Mountain Village's time currently stands at a 12847, which is actually the newest world record at the time of recording. Russell, a member of the 1080 community, beat Bert's time by 6 centiseconds. A low 12820 is very possible for Mountain Village. The fifth level Dragon Cave is by far the hardest level in the game. Bert shared with me that he's lucky to get about one clean run on average per hour. This is most likely the reason that Russell decided to put the $500 bounty on this stage originally. The level is difficult because there is a part where you go off a big drop and have to navigate between two rocks. Once you go off the cliff into the air, you have no control over your direction of movement. Before going over the cliff, you need to approach it at a very precise angle to land between the two rocks. There is also tight angling needed when approaching a bridge later in the level, and the goal is to not bonk. All this aside, a 123.30 or 20 is very possible, but will take serious effort. The last level Deadly Fall is highly optimized. This is because of the intense competition that the community has had on this track. Bert's time on this track is a 106.89, and he thinks that a perfect run would be a 106.82 or 79 at most. It's not impossible to beat any of these track records, it will just take some serious dedication. The new bounty for this game is another $500, and there's some twists to make it interesting. If only one track has a new world record at the end of the year, the player will win the entire prize pool. If two players each have a new world record, those players will split the $500 bounty two ways, and so on. Also, if one player has two or more records, the benefactor will add $50 for each record. The total possible bounty in this instance is $800, one player who holds all six records. Bird has also recused himself from the competition, so he may still set new records, but will not win any of the prizes. More information from the Reddit thread detailing this competition will be linked in the description. $800 is up for grabs to smash this game even further. At number 4 we have Super Smash Bros Melee. Earlier this year a bounty was made public in the hopes of achieving a community sum of best sub 3 minutes in the single player stadium event, Break the Targets. For those unfamiliar with the event, it consists of 10 targets, with each character in the game having very different stages. The overall goal is to successfully break all 10 targets without dying, but then a challenge comes into play of doing it as fast as possible. Break the Targets has had quite the history with overall optimization, with every individual character's world record having near frame perfect movement. Since the announcement of the bounty, a total of 15 frames have been saved, one with Roy, Luigi, and Young Link, two with Donkey Kong, three with Bowser, and seven with Fox. At the time of recording, the community sum of best currently sits at 3 minutes, 0 seconds, and 62 centiseconds. To achieve the sub 3 minute goal, 38 more frames need to be saved, and since Super Smash Bros. Melee runs at 60 frames per second on the NTSC version, one frame is 1 60th of a second. Save state from the Smash Stadium Discord shared with me that out of the entire cast, Jigglypuff and Pikachu have the most time save potential. The strategies to execute these saves are difficult, however. Jigglypuff needs a near frame perfect clip into the floor to skip a small section, and Pikachu needs a very precise up B edge cancel. He also shared that Ganondorf specifically has no time save at all, because there's a cycle where you end up having to wait for a target in the end. However, if someone were to discover an absurd strategy that saved time, there would still be a payout. All in all, most of the cast have at least one frame that can be saved. The Smash Stadium community is offering a $31.30 bounty for each frame that is saved across any character. They have already paid out $469.50 from the original stated bounty of $1,658.90, bringing the current total bounty pool to $1,189.40. Let's save the frames. At number 3 we have Nier Automata. This game has a total of 26 endings and epilogues, and the majority of them are silly joke endings that are not canon to the main story, while others offer a different perspective of the main story. The most popular category for the speedrun is the A ending, which simply involves completing the game for the first time. You can think of the A ending as the true any percent for this game. About 50 minutes into the run, you encounter a boss known as Grun. It's 12 minutes of mostly auto-scrolling with a few short parts that matter. 
The current world record for this game is 1 hour, 22 minutes, and 51 seconds, and a 12 minute auto-scroller skip would definitely be beneficial to the game. Canaris from the Nier Automata community shared with me that a guy named Marky, one of the game's main glitch hunters, worked very hard to find some way to skip the entire sequence, including things like dying while entering a flight unit, wrong warping with a transporter, and breaking out of the set path the flight unit follows during the flight, using specific positioning. However, nothing has been successful, and it is widely believed that it's impossible a skip could be found. There is currently only one actual sequence break in the game, and it's in a longer category, known as the E ending. It utilizes a developer oversight of adding a non-unique key item into your inventory every time you enter the area in which it's supposed to be used. Doing such allows you to skip a few areas and boss fights. However, the progression surrounding Grun is not based on item acquisition. Defeating Grun changes the world state and furthers the story, and unlocks the door to the next main area, which then spawns dialogue triggers and a boss fight trigger. Therefore, a Grun skip would have to involve activating these events in some manner, probably by skipping the section of Grun where you fly around and kill waves of enemies, and proceed directly to destroying the third of the three EMP generators, which is what ends the fight. Unfortunately, Marky gave up long ago, and there wasn't too much interest outside the community. There is a bounty of at least $1,500, with Canaris offering to pay 1,000 of that himself for someone to find a skip usable in A ending, abiding by the current rule set, and it must be replicable. Techtheus from the community also said that he would buy a pizza for whoever finds Grun skip. Also, upon joining the Discord for this community to gain insight, I was hit with a poggers by one of the members, so there is still an interest for the skip to be found. At number 2 we have Ratchet & Clank Up Your Arsenal. For the last 4 years, Zem92 has held the world record in the New Game Plus No Quit Exploit category. After finishing the game for the first time, a player can replay the game while retaining all weapons with their upgrades, nanotech level, bolts, armor, and collectible items. To compensate, enemies are more powerful and can withstand more damage, so New Game Plus is essentially a challenge mode. There's a bug in the game called Quit Exploit. The short answer of what this includes is bolt count, number of challenge modes completed, number of frames played, and planet ID. By exiting the game, you induce something called pointer manipulation, which rewrites in-game memory and causes in-game items you normally get at the ends of planets to be placed in the vendor for purchase, saving 15 minutes compared to the normal NG Plus speedrun. Because of this, the main category of this game is NG Plus No Quit Exploit, since it's the fastest category that doesn't include a major bug. Zem is offering a $1,000 bounty to someone who can break the world record in this category, which sits at a time of 28 minutes and 16 seconds at the time of recording this video. The main guidelines for this bounty is it will last until May 5th, 2020, and whoever breaks the record must hold on to it for 10 consecutive days. There are other guidelines he has set in place, and I will link his video of him talking about this contest in the description, so if you're interested, be sure to watch it. In addition to the $1,000 prize pool, he did a fundraiser to raise additional funds, which totaled at $587. This means that $1,587 is up for grabs to break this world record. Before I announce the number 1 entry on this list, I want to share some honorable mentions. Originally, the number 10 entry on this list was going to be a $200 bounty on Kirby Planet Robobot for finding a glitch in Meta Nightmare Returns mode. However, I wasn't able to get into contact with the person running the bounty, and in case for some reason it's not active, I didn't want to include it. Also in the description of this video, I have listed additional bounties that are yet to be claimed, and there are a lot of them. I included links for each one, and if you'd like to get into contact with the person or community offering the bounty, feel free to do so. The bounties are in a Google Sheets document, and I will try to update these as much as I can. If there are bounties that I have missed, feel free to DM them to me on Twitter, and I will add them to the document. Anyways, let's move on to the number one entry on this list, Super Mario 64. One of the most popular 3D platformers of all time, Super Mario 64 has a rich history in speedrunning. In modern times, the 120 star world record for this game has been held by Cheese on and off for a few years, and has consecutively been held by him since June of 2017. He's improved his personal best since June 2017 by a total of 37 seconds, with his current time sitting at 1 hour, 38 minutes, and 51 seconds. Back in March earlier this year, a redditor known as fbomb2f posted a thread offering a $4,000 bounty on the 120 star world record. The goal is to beat Cheese's current world record, and hold it by the end of the year, December 31st, 2019. The run must be done on the Nintendo 64 console, and have video proof. In addition, attempts at this bounty must also be done live on stream, such as Twitch for example. He stated in his thread that if no one is able to beat the current world record held by Cheese by the time the bounty expires, then he'll figure something out. You might be thinking to yourself, $4,000 for a bounty, why so much? 
Well, F-Bomb simply states that he loves the 120 star category, and he is an avid fan of competition. The post currently sits at over 1,000 upvotes on Reddit, and is legitimate as far as anyone can tell. I know I mentioned the description a lot in this video, but be sure to check it out to view the information that has been covered. Alright everybody, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to leave a like, as it's the best way to show support. Vscape worked really hard on this video, so be sure to let him know how he did in the comments. Also, I've recently reopened the Discord server, and this channel has grown a lot since I last had it opened, so I know a lot of you guys aren't in it. Link for that will be in the description. Anyways guys, that's all I have to say. Subscribe for more speedrunning related content, and as always, I hope you have a beautiful life. Give him C's visions of comments. Technique hit by force the earth I hit and bomb it. Immaculate conception with the weapon.